From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. As we get into the program today, I think that you will agree. This is one of the most important programs that we have ever done for you. And I trust that the Lord will take it and use it for his glory. First of all, the betrayal of Christianity. Oh, my. And then Rick Warren's bridge to Islam. Thirdly, the New Age movement's explosion I'm praying that we'll get to that third one, but there's an awful lot that we want to cover. So if we don't, we will be doing it in the future very, very soon. Now, you know, I've had a little bit of fun lately in asking people about the Ten Commandments. Have you ever uh, asked anybody to name the Ten Commandments? Well, the cartoonists took up on this. Most people don't know. Two little boys talking here. I don't know all the Ten Commandments. The only ones I remember are settle down. Act your age and take that out of your mouth. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> well, those were three commandments, but it, they weren't from the Lord, probably from Mama or Daddy. And uh, it's a shame because most people really don't know the Bible that well, including the Ten Commandments, Jack. Oh, the Ten Commandments, not Ten Suggestions, according to Ted Koppel. Listen to me very carefully. I'm talking to you translators who don't know enough about your Bibles to put the right name of God into the text and then do away with 91 verses where Jesus is the Son of God. You hear me? That probably is the type of translation you would do on the Ten Commandments because you've really defected from the faith. And let me tell you this, when Christianity sleeps with Islam, it produces Chrislam and also Bedlam. Take that to bed with you. All right. That's a good one. Amen. Bedlam. <laughs> I will never forget this week waking up, and my husband said, I've been in my study, and the Lord has laid something so very, very profound on my heart. We're going to be introducing to you in April a brand, a brand new video, also a brand new one today. But we've also done a new one for April, and I would like for Jack to tell you what the Lord laid on his heart. Jack, this is tremendous. Folks, I don't understand it. I've been in the ministry 65 years, but in the last two years, I've been having unusual experiences with the Holy Spirit. Oh, he doesn't come and sit down and talk to me. I don't see him, but I awaken, and the thoughts that I'm supposed to present to you are in my mind. And you know, the Bible says that just before Jesus comes, He's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams. And I'm at that age now. Oh. And see, strange things happen. God gave me this in just about a minute, two mornings ago. Would you put it on the screen for all me, right, please? Yes. Our precious God and only Savior is about to fulfill his promise to come again. John 14:3. I believe this glorious hour is near and that we today will experience this momentous event soon, Matthew 24, 33 and Luke 21, 32. In our upcoming video study to be released in April entitled Awake America, the World's Final Warning, I will prove that we are that final generation. When this glorious event takes place, we'll be raptured into Christ's presence to give account of our lifetime of service, good and bad, 2 Corinthians 5:10. Each of us will be asked if we fought the good fight of faith and have earnestly contended for the faith once and for all delivered unto the saints. 1 Timothy 6.12 and Jude 1.3. We'll also be asked, did you take a stand against ungodly men who denied the only God and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ? In Jude 1.14 and 15, the Holy Spirit states, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of the hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against Christ. My answer will be, I have fought these antichrists with all the human energy I had, Jesus, and with all the boldness the Holy Spirit heaped upon me, Acts 1.8. And I want to tell you, 
This message is especially for Whitecliffe translators, the Summer Institute of Linguistics, and Frontiers. You've defected from the faith. God forgive you. We're going to deal with it more strongly than ever because of the Holy Spirit coming upon me for this program. You know, Jack, I, I know there are going to be uh, some people out there who are going to say, oh, we can't know when it's near. Well, that's not what the Bible says. We'll know when it's near, but not at the, the exact day or the hour. Yes. And you know, Jack, you've never done that. You've never said this is the day or this is the hour like some have. Yeah but you can know when it's near. I'm saying this is the generation. Wait till you get awake, America. That new video that comes out in April. Oh, man. Well, you know what, Jack? I just want to say that uh, there are many things upon your heart. And we want to, I just want you to enumerate very quickly before we go on with our headlines. One world government, one world religion. You've heard him speak of it very, very much, and it is something that will happen just prior to the return of the Lord. I'm going to ask him, you might want to write this down because it is very important. Where is the one world government, the one world religion found in the Bible? In the Old Testament, under Judaism, Daniel chapters 2 and 7. In the New Testament, Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 18. In verse 1 of that 13th chapter, it's the rise of the Antichrist. And verse 7 says he has power over all kindreds, tongues, people, and nations, world government. And all who dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life. And why do they worship him? Because beginning with verse 11, we have the false prophet. And he makes an image to this Antichrist to be set up in the temple. And the temple is in waiting right now, I understand, from all the sources I've studied. Now, notice something. He has the two horns of a lamb identifying him with Christianity. But he speaks as a dragon, meaning it is a satanic power working through a Christian. I don't blame what's going on right now on the Muslim people. They haven't demanded that we change our Bible. I blame it on these apostates in Christianity. God forgive them as they manhandled this holy book in new versions coming out. But wait a minute now. That has to happen just before Jesus comes. That's why we're the generation. It's near. Second Thessalonians 2, 3. Let no man deceive you, for that day Christ's return shall not come except there come an apostasia, Greek, a falling away from the faith, a defection, what's going on right now like we've never known it in the history of the world. And then what? Then shall that wicked one be revealed, the son of perdition, the Antichrist who shall exalt himself as he sits in the temple of God in Israel, saying, I am God. That's how close we are to it now, all sponsored and brought to pass as this false Christian prophet promotes the Antichrist. And it's the Christians right now who are really defaming our faith. Don't blame it on Islam. Blame it on the compromisers who want us to become one religion, Chrislam. Christianity and Islam combined. Mm, oh, yes. So that's good, Jack, because that leads me right into this next point. Jack has spoken so very much about Chrislam, the blending of those two religions, Christianity and Islam, and so many others now for which we praise the Lord, are beginning to recognize it and speak about it. Here's one, and I would like you to take a look at the Chrislam rising. The movement to blend Christianity and Islam is spreading rapidly in the U.S. Here is the Charisma magazine. Of course, there you see it. And I'd like to read just a bit of that article for you, the movement to blend Christianity and Islam is spreading rapidly in the United States. Communities across the nation are taking Christianity and Islam to diametrically oppose theologies and working to blend them together. Chrism, as the name suggests, is a growing movement wherein some Christians are seeking to find common ground with Muslims. Dr. Jack Benipi, the popular end time television host, walked away from TBN in the wake of a dispute over naming well-known ministers he claims are mixing 
Muslim and Christian beliefs. Dr. Van Ibby cried censorship and ended the 23-year relationship. When I see heretical teaching leading to apostasy, I will speak out. That's exactly what he said. Here you see the magazine, The Betrayal of Christianity, Ravenous Wolves in Sheep's Clothing, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. I'd like for you to see Reverend David Wilkerson. He is home with the Lord. What a man of God. And he said, the dangers of the gospel of accommodation. I tremble when I read in the scriptures that in the last days, Satan is going to come right into the church posing as an angel of light. He's going to take ministers who at one time had the touch of God and he's going to transform them into angels of light to become his tools of deception. That's frightening. It causes me to fall on my face before God for such false, deceitful workers. And my, what a great article that is. I have to ask Jack this question. Uh, he's hit something right here. I think very, very, very well. How can ministers turn away from the truth that they've even been preaching? How can they, Jack? How can they turn away like he mentioned in this article? Well, many of them who are preaching today aren't really born-again Christians. They get the theology in their head, but not in their heart. They are those who are unconverted converts and they learn the language and Jesus says this people honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me mark 7 verse 6 and the Bible says Antichrist shall come in 1st John 2 18 in Brixell I've been quoting this verse for years but I don't memorize chapters I take everything alphabetically and chronologically from Genesis to Revelation and it really hit me this week now I used to say 1 John 2, 19 happened to ordained ministers who just turned away from the faith. It says they went out from us, but they weren't of us. If they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they turned their back on it that it might be made manifest they were not of us. But wait a minute. I saw it. 1 John 2, 18, and I'm going to quote both verses again. Antichrist shall come. They went out from us. They weren't of us. If they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might be made manifest. They were not all of us. And what are they teaching? Verse 22, right in context. They teach against Jesus being the Son of God. And he says, he who believes that and teaches that is also an antichrist. Even ministers who defect from the faith and God help us, they're falling everywhere right now. But here's another tremendous verse. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 to 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers. What? Don't marvel. Don't get shocked. Even Satan himself is turned into an angel of light. And if Satan is turned into an angel of light, it's no great thing if his ministers, Satan's ministers, transform themselves into the ministers of righteousness. God help these hypocrites. 300 signed the Yale Covenant, which says Allah is our God. 300 Christian leaders, including Schuler and Rick Ward. Oh, deny it all you want, but we've got the documentation everywhere as you're going to see transform themselves into the ministers of righteousness. And thousands are following these men across the world. New Age men. They follow the New Age teachings. Brother Smith, who wrote four books on the New Age movement because he was converted out of it in 1984, said, I was shocked when at the Crystal Cathedral they had these men preaching. And they're the crowd with whom I ran when I was a New Age apostate. Rick Warren dealt with him often. We mean two weeks from now really get into this part of it, but you see, Satan can appear as an angel of light, and so can his ministers. Oh, Jack, we're going to delve into that in just a moment, a little bit deeper, but he mentioned the name there. 
Rick Warren, and I have used a couple of the headlines that you are going to be seeing right now. We want to update you a bit on this to see where he's gone. Rick Warren keeps faith at Islamic Conference. Well, you know, it would have been a good thing if he would have shared his faith Amen. there, wouldn't he it? <laughs> Believe me, he did Rick didn't. Warren does it again, and of course I've used that before. And Rick Warren, often called America's pastor, will be serving as a keynote speaker for our Saudi-backed Muslim group that promotes a radical strain of Wahhabi Islam in about 80% of the U.S. mosques. I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired of Rick Warren's bad judgments. And then from World Net Daily, Rick Warren's Bridge to Islam. Again, let's take a look. Joseph Farah. I've had a number of issues with Rick Warren over the years. But with his latest effort to find common theological ground with Muslims and suggesting Christians and Muslims worship the same God. Now, whoa, take a look at this. The man dubbed America's pastor by the secular media is getting very close to heresy, if not crossing the line. This is not a minor theological difference. It is as basic and fundamental as it gets. That is powerful. And then World Net Daily, Islamic group threatens World Net Daily. My oh and for my. our, pray for that brother. Yes, do pray for him. And we're going to be going on here with Rick Warren, Tower of Babel. Now, here is an article by Joel Richardson. Jack, it might be good if you read it, please. It's so interesting. An article in the Orange County Register reports that Rick Warren, the man dubbed America's pastor, has launched a new program called King's Way, the purpose of which is to promote peace and unity between Muslims and Christians. I'm in favor of that, but not if you have to destroy Christianity and do it by renaming your God Allah. Let's go on. As part of their effort to promote their mutual goals, Warren's pastoral staff and local Muslim leaders have co-authored a document outlining the points of agreement between Muslims and Christians. It affirms that both Muslims and Christians together believe in one God. There it is, but that one God they call Allah, and Yahweh has nothing to do with it anymore. Warren has made statements to the effect that the Orange County Register article contained errors. The editors have disagreed, arguing that all of their facts are entirely accurate. Whoa! Powerful, isn't it, friends? It really, really is. And now, I think it would be very good if we were to ask Jack a very good question, a burden on my heart. Does the Bible really address men like this? who once really stood for all the fundamentals of the faith and went right down the line, as we're going to talk about in a moment. What does the Bible call them if they depart from that, Jack? The Bible, as well as Jesus, in Matthew 24, verses 5, 11, and 24, calls them false Christ and false prophets. And in verse 24, Jesus said, There shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they'll deceive even the very elect. The cream of the crop and the churches will become bamfoozled by these people. And boy, these two guys have done plenty of it in their lifetime already. Now, Rexella, Yahweh God, for his name is not Allah, it's Yahweh, said in Jeremiah 14, verse 14, the prophets are lying prophets in my name. I did not send them. Now, what is wrong with what these men are teaching? They talk about the similarities. What about the contrasts? Second Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately, secretly shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord Jesus that bought them. First Timothy 4.1, the Holy Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the Christian faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. All hell is behind what's going on right now. And it's the last sign before Jesus returns. That's why I'm saying we are that generation. Now, Second Timothy 4, verses 2 to 4, preach the word. 
be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they'll heap to themselves teachers who will tickle their ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and be turned unto fables. We got a lot of fable preachers on Sunday morning. They give the people nothing but pablum because they don't know their Bibles and they are pulled in by these men for the blasphemous turn against Jesus, my precious Lord and Savior. Now, listen to what I said earlier in the program. The Holy Spirit came upon me. Jude, beginning with verse 3. We are to earnestly contend for the faith once and for all delivered unto the saints. For there are ungodly men who crept in secretly among you, denying the Lord God and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what's going on right now, as we're going to see in a minute. And the blasphemies they're teaching about this Jesus. Similarities, bunk. Verse 8 calls them filthy dreamers. Verse 10, they speak about things about which they know nothing. But listen to verse 14 and 15. Their day is coming. The Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which ungodly sinners have spoken against them and all the hard speeches which these ungodly sinners have preached. God help us. Jesus is coming soon. This is the greatest sign. Apostasy. Defection from the faith by those who have the two horns of a lamb, Christianity. It's here, ladies and gentlemen. Prepare to meet thy God. Amos 4.12, Jesus is about to return. Oh, Jack, I'm looking forward to that day because he's my Savior. Now, how can we go along with what these men want to do, combining Christianity and Islam, when they're opposed, absolutely opposed, to who Jesus was? We believe Jesus was Savior of the world, Son of God. I'm going to ask Jack a question. What do they believe? First of all, they do not believe that Christ is the Savior of the world as mentioned in 1 John 4:14. 4, they do not believe he was a deity. They do not believe he died on a cross. They believe that he became a Muslim after he left, converted to Allah, and when he returns, he will be the chief executioner under their Messiah, Mukti, to eliminate all Jews and Christians who will not convert. God help us! Secondly, they don't believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God because Allah had no children. Forget that. The Bible teaches that anyone who denies the Father and Son relationship is an antichrist, 1 John 2.22. Does the Bible teach he was the Son of God? Jesus looked at the Apostle Peter in Matthew 16, verses 15 to 17. He says, Peter, who do men say I am? He said, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I say unto you, Peter, that on this rock that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But we get some of these Christians with the two horns of a lamb who are going to try to do their best. God, forgive them. And listen, recently... Rick Warren went along with what he said in 2005 to the Pew Research on Religion. He said, I don't like this legalistic fundamentalism and its five points. It is legalistic and narrow-minded. Really? That's the biggest blasphemy I've ever heard, Rick, out of the five points. The deity of Jesus Christ, his virgin birth, his blood atonement, his bodily resurrection, and his coming again. You better get those two horns of a lamb off your head and start getting a real experience with Christ. All you preachers that signed that covenant that Allah is our God. Oh, Jack, you know what? I'm so happy for the day that I believe what he just said about the Lord, that he is the Son of God, that he did come to the world to die for my sins. And some of you are bearing some very hard things right now. Maybe you're going through an alcoholic readjustment or drug rehabilitation. God can do that because Jesus died for you. Will you open your heart to him? Jack, pray the prayer of salvation, please. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. But, oh, I love this Jesus, don't you? 
the Savior of the world, God in human flesh, who came to die and took a body with blood to agonize and suffer to cleanse you from your sin. All you have to do is ask him to come into your heart. Lord Jesus, Savior, God, I'm asking you now to come into my heart. I receive the precious blood shed Calvary for my sins. Come in today. Be my Savior, Jesus. I ask it in your name. Amen. Oh, amen. I trust you prayed that prayer. If you did, there's my address. I will send you this wonderful little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. The Lord wants to walk with you as your Savior, and he will forgive you of all your sins if you prayed that prayer. So please let me know. There's my address. This will be in the mail as soon as I hear from you. And now, friends, woo, a brand new offer, the betrayal of Christianity. How? Ravenous wolves in sheep's clothing. We can't get everything in a half-hour program to you, but everything we've been talking about today is on here, plus so much more. How is it possible to determine whether someone's truly a Christian when they claim to be? We talk about it on here. And what is President Obama's real view of Christianity in America and even around the world? We can know that too. What kinds of persecution are going on around the world today? Are Christians being persecuted around the world? They certainly are, and we talk about that on here. Now, our announcer is going to be telling you right now how you can receive this brand new offer, The Betrayal of Christianity. To order The Betrayal of Christianity, Ravenous Wolves in Sheep's Clothing on DVD or VHS. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapee Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapee Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Rexella? Make the call, please, right away, because everything we've been talking about today is relevant to your life. In fact, it has to do with your church, perhaps, your pastor. You really want to know that what he is speaking about is absolutely true. So many churches are going along with Chrislam, you know, so you don't want to go along with that. You want to know exactly what is right. The betrayal of Christianity, ravenous wolves, in sheep's clothing. There's the number, there's the address. We'll get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. You know, friends, I want to leave you with a very, very good thought. Christ showed his love by dying for us. We show our love by living for him. We'll look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, please remember God cares for you so very much, and so do we. Bye-bye.